115 years ago on a sunny summer day in Siberia, something extraordinary occurred. It was the biggest asteroid crash ever recorded, and it happened on June 30. This day is now called Asteroid Day, in memory of what scientists call the Tunguska Explosion. This massive explosion rocked the sky over a remote area in present-day Krasnoyarsk Krai, Russia, near the Podkamenea Tunguska River. In this video, we will learn more about the Tunguska event. We will look at its causes, effects, and the long-lasting questions it raises about the Earth's place in the universe. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get regular updates. Let's get started. What happened during the Tunguska event? Most people agree that the Tunguska explosion was caused by a big asteroid or meteoroid that exploded high in the Earth's atmosphere, keeping it from hitting the ground. This is called a meteor air burst. This event called the Tunguska event is the biggest one that has been recorded in history, though there may have been bigger ones in the past. When a meteoroid reaches the Earth's atmosphere, it moves very quickly, which makes the air in front of it compress and heat up. It burns up because of the high heat, leaving a bright streak in the sky. Larger meteoroids, on the other hand, can explode instead. When this kind of explosion releases its energy all at once, it sends out a strong shockwave that clears a large area of more than 2,000 square kilometers. Experts don't think the explosion made a standard impact crater because it happened in the air, but it is still considered an impact event. Because the Tunguska event happened in a remote place and scientists didn't have many tools at the time, many other ideas have been put forward. In 1930, there was an idea that the object might have been a small piece of the comet Enk, not a meteorite or an asteroid. Comets are mostly made of ice and dust, which easily evaporate at high temperatures. This is why there isn't a hole where they hit. This idea is supported by the fact that the sky was glowing during the event. This could have been caused by dust and ice that the comet threw into the air. This idea is also strengthened by the fact that the event happened at the same time as the peak of the Beta Tarita meteor shower, which is made up of pieces of a comet. Tunguska explosion largest in recorded history. After the Tunguska event, things went from bad to worse very quickly. Even though the blast happened in an area with few people, it could have caused unimaginable damage if it had happened in a heavily populated area. The remote position of Tunguska saved human lives but it was very bad for the ecosystem in the area. The shockwave from the explosion crushed about 80 million trees, making the area uninhabitable for years. Even in Europe, people could see the effects of the explosion, such as bright sunsets and noctilucent clouds. These effects on the atmosphere, which were caused by particles put into the upper atmosphere, lasted for several years and had a big effect on how the temperature changed around the world. Scientists have figured out that the object in question was probably a rock asteroid about the size of a 25-story building. This rock was flying through space at a speed of about 33,500 miles per hour, which is a very fast speed. It burst in the air somewhere between 3 and 6 miles above the surface of the Earth. Even though this blast happened in the air, it caused a lot of damage on the ground. Evidence of Atmospheric Explosion at first, researchers believed that the asteroid had never actually made contact with the ground or created a crater. They speculated that it could have been a small ice fragment of a comet that was so feeble that it melted when it reached the atmosphere of the Earth, so leaving no trace behind. On the other hand, planetary scientists of today have greater tools at their disposal to figure out what occurs when a meteorite explodes in the atmosphere. A powerful shock is imparted upon a meteorite whenever it travels through the atmosphere at speeds of 12 to 20 kilometers per second or higher. This is analogous to the force imparted upon a surfer whenever they make a violent impact with the water surface. Rocks that are between a particular size and weight threshold can be shattered by this technique, causing them to explode before they even reach the ground. Some of these fragments can be as large as bricks and fall to the earth while others, such as the one that occurred in Siberia, primarily create a brilliant fireball and a cloud of fine dust and fragments of much smaller size. In 1993, experts Chris Chiba, Paul Thomas, and Kevin Zana looked closely at the Siberian explosion and concluded that it was indeed of this type, a stone meteorite that had exploded in the atmosphere.
This finding was backed up even more when Russian scientists found small pieces of stone stuck in the trees at the impact site. These pieces were made of the same material as most stone meteorites. The first piece of the asteroid may have been about 50 to 60 meters across. Could it happen again? Many pieces of rock and metal circle, the sun-like little planets. One of these things in Siberia was the biggest thing to hit Earth in the last hundred years. It would have done a lot of damage if it had hit a place where people live. You might wonder why these effects aren't more common. Well, we do have them, but until recently we didn't know about them. Scientists have learned that these blasts happen about every 200 years. Most of them, though, happen over the ocean. Only a few of them happen where people live. The key is that the less often something happens, the more powerful it is. In the 1990s, a small explosion over the Pacific Ocean was seen by an Air Force sensor. In 1972, a huge 1,000-ton object came very close to Earth in Wyoming, but it didn't crash. If it did, it could have set off a big blast over Canada. Even bigger things have hit Earth, but it doesn't happen very often. For example, 20,000 years ago, a piece of iron about 100 meters wide hit Arizona, making the Arizona Meteor Crater. A 10-kilometer wide rock hit Earth 65 million years ago, killing all the dinosaurs. Small rocks from space land in different places on Earth every year. Some of them even hit cars and houses. At night, you can see tiny dust particles that are often called shooting stars. No doubt that there are many small things in space, and all of them move in bent paths around the sun. Their tracks sometimes cross those of planets, which causes them to crash. All over our solar system, big crashes make big holes on the surfaces of planets and moons. If we keep studying these space rocks and make more cameras to find them, we can learn more about how often they hit and maybe even get a warning before a big one comes our way. Preparing for future events. In the year 2019, researchers shared what they had discovered about the Tunguska catastrophe in papers that were published in the journal Icarus. They came up with the concept of doing this study while attending a workshop in Silicon Valley's Ames Study Center that was hosted by NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office. In recent years, scientists have begun to focus more of their attention on the possibility that large space rocks, such as comets and asteroids, will collide with Earth. Because of occurrences such as the Tunguska event, as well as other less significant hits, they have developed programs that are able to monitor objects known as NEOs that are in close proximity to the Earth. They get together frequently to discuss what they should do in the event that a large object starts moving in their direction. That's all for now. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to us for more amazing videos. Thank you.